Hi, this is Scott Richardson for the uh, the Bench Doctor from the Liberal Gun Club. And today is going to be the final uh, installment in the saga of this old uh, 1921 Colt Police Positive. In the previous videos, I uh, kind of talked a little bit about the gun and uh, its history as far as I know and showed just how bad it was. The finish was just destroyed by somebody with a wire brush. And uh, I did a couple of videos about taking it apart and uh, prepping it for the bluing process. And then kind of went over the process of rust bluing. Uh, I didn't show me boiling the parts. And I showed a little bit about carting it off and what that means. And uh, then once the rust bluing was complete, I did two or three uh, rounds on these parts to get them to the color I wanted. And then I sprayed them down with oil. I used uh, Hoppy's lubricating oil this time. I usually use mineral oil, but Hoppy's uh, lubricating oil was what I had close at hand. So I sprayed everything down and gave it a good coating of oil and let it set overnight and let that get into the pores of the metal and stop the bluing process, uh, stop any acids that were still at work and uh, neutralize all that and displace any water that uh, may have still been present from the boiling and carting. So today, I'm just going to go ahead and reassemble this thing and kind of function check it real quick and uh, see what we end up with. So here are all the parts. I didn't rust blue the little screws and uh, the cylinder keeper. They were still in pretty good shape and they're kind of a pain to clean off and uh, redo so you can see that the you know they're still still got a nice rich blue to them from uh the original bluing so i didn't see any point in messing with that and you can see the frame still has a little bit of uneven surface wear uh in this plate there's still some pitting um not much i could do about that short of taking off more metal than i was comfortable with uh and i would have completely removed that prancing horse roll mark so I, I just left it the way it is. This gun was never going to be a pristine example again. Its days are, uh, were numbered as it was since it was so rusty. Um, I figured I'd take it apart, clean it, uh, preserve it as much as I could, and get it back in service just for the fun of it. Uh, it's not a particularly valuable gun, but it is a useful gun, kind of a neat old gun. Uh, so we're going to go ahead and get started, and uh, you can see I left this piece in, this little uh, lock, the cylinder lock. I left that in there because that screw was really difficult to get out, and it's very, very shallow. And since that screw, is, or that, that little spring down in there is still good, I didn't want to take this apart and, and, and risk damaging that screw or the arm or anything. Um, so I just made sure it got a good dose of oil and uh, it still seems to be working fine. So I'm gonna go ahead and leave it and not gonna mess with it. So to get started with this process, uh, the first thing we're gonna to wanna to do is take our trigger, this piece right here, and this is all covered in oil. Um, I'm gonna leave it covered in oil for a while. I'll probably take it apart and clean it again at a later date and get some of the excess oil out of there, but and I'll blow it out with some air. So, uh, oh, I forgot, we gotta do one, I always forget this little, um, this little arm right here is what activates our transfer bar safety. So this arm needs to go in with a long leg down. So you can see we have a short and a long leg. The long leg goes down, drops right over this post, and it fits right on top of this little knob right here that is part of, this is our little transfer bar safety. This moves back and forth. So that goes, drops in place, this drops on top of it. And now with our trigger, there's a little post right here. And that post needs to go into the little uh, opening on the lower, the longer end of that leg. So our, our uh, trigger drops over this post on the frame and then the little post coming off of the trigger goes into this little, uh, opening here and you can see when you pull the trigger it moves that bar right here out of our way so we're going to make sure that that is on there 
and it is prone to coming off when you assemble these old guns because these get, parts get worn a little bit. So what I like to do is keep a little bit of pressure. Uh, make sure that's on there. Now see, if, as I work the trigger, it, it moves this arm up and down, which then moves this safety up and down. This piece needs to come out of there. This is uh, our bolt or you know part of the cylinder latch mechanism. This is what goes forward and locks into the cylinder on here like that. So that goes in, and I, this is the first one I've taken these apart where this piece has come out. I didn't even realize they were separate, but this fell out the first time I took the gun apart, and I was surprised because I'd never seen it do that. Uh, at some point, I'll probably clean this all off and then maybe uh, put a little Loctite or something in there to keep it in place. But for now, we'll just go ahead and forge on. So this goes into this opening up here, this little mechanism, and I've got a uh, cut on my thumb and so it's bandaged and I don't really have the dexterity that I normally do. I don't have my normal lack of dexterity. I'm going to use some needle nose and try to guide this in. I'm going to make this look a lot harder than it is today because of that. I can't really put a lot of pressure on that thumb. slide right in so when the safety works when I when I pull my trigger it comes down and blocks you can see it blocks this from opening so you want to make sure that that's still hooked up and I like to keep a little pressure down on this trigger as I go because like I said this little notch is worn and this pin likes to pop out so I just keep my finger on there as I go um, as a little extra insurance so now we can drop our hammer in. This is your hammer post. It fits right, the hammer fits right over that. So this drops on there, like so. And you see your trigger moving it. And you can see this post moving into place. And it moves out of the way of the hammer as we pull the trigger. So. Like so. So we're going to put that back there. Okay. Now we need to put our action arm. I believe that's what this piece is called right here. And it fits down in, it, it fits in this slot in the frame right here. And there's a little pin right here that holds it all together. And on this particular gun, at some point, there was some downward shock on this and it bent this just a little bit and this being really old metal I don't like bending stuff like that I mean I could heat it up and bend it back um, but then you kind of have to retemper it or you know I just worry about doing things like that on 100 year old metal so I, I bent it just a tiny bit and I filed this off just a tiny bit so it's still snugger than it needs to be but I that's as comfortable as I want to uh, as I am with bending parts or modifying things that don't really need it. It really just makes it easier to assemble it. This should just pop right in there, but it's a little bit tight on this gun because of the damage that it had. Still works, so uh, see that pops in there like that. And then I like to take a little punch and align it like so. Take your little pin. Right. Once again, my dexterity is compromised today. Put that right there. Just a little hammer. This shouldn't take much force. Yeah, it just dropped right in there. So that that is now in our in place. So now we can fit our hand right here. This is the hand, and it goes in the gun this way. And this post right there fits into this little hole on the trigger. So it drops in this way. 
hammer rotates up there. You can see the slot in, that's been cut in the frame here for this hammer to ride up and push the cylinder around. So you can drop that back where it needs to be, right there. Okay, now we're going to put in our hammer spring or mainspring, whatever you call it. You'll notice that there's a little protrusion right here, right there. That fits into a little hole in the frame right here. So sometimes it takes a little bit of jiggling around with a pair of pliers to get it to drop into place, but you'll hear it click when that um, pin drops in. This little hook here hooks onto the bottom of this arm on the hammer. So what I like to do is compress this spring as much as I can with a pair of pliers. Like so, just pinch it. And you kind of hook that, that arm that coming off of the hammer. Uh, like so. You gotta make sure you hook it. Sorry if I'm blocking, whoop. Sorry if I'm blocking the view here. This, is, this isn't terribly difficult to do. It just takes a couple of attempts. But I compress that. Make sure that that's hooked on the little legs of this arm, like so. And then I drop it in place. And see, it's not quite in that little notch. So you can kind of see it from the side. Give it a little tap. Sometimes you can bump it where it needs to be. Now it needs to come over and in just a little bit and down. Almost there. We get a little bit of a wider screwdriver to pry with. That's in there now. So at this point, we want to function check it. I keep my thumb on this um, trigger because, like I said, I don't want to displace that arm. So what do we got it here. What are we doing here? We're not in position. Yeah, we are there. There we go. So now I'm going to dry fire it. Okay. Triggers reset, double action. And I'm pushing down because I do not want that trigger leg to come off of that little uh, arm there. And I've had that happen, and then you got to take it all back apart and redo it. So here's our plate this cover plate we have this spring in there and there's a little plunger that goes in there I don't have one I have one on order and when it comes I'll put it in there it just drops down into the top of that spring so you take your latch and you slide it on there like so check it make sure that that springs got some tension on it and you see this post right here on our on our bolt there needs to be aligned with the hole here so the way it goes together is you have to kind of push back a little bit on the latch and put it in place and you'll it should fit right over that post if it's right there we go Let me give it a little tap feel make sure everything's flush check it make sure you have some spring tension there okay so now that lower lock work is all back together we can put in our two plate screws here and here. And I just snug these down. I don't get super tight with them. This is 100 year old stuff and these threads are pretty fine so we want to be careful. There's no reason to 
Gorilla Titan this stuff. This isn't a service gun. That's it's a range gun now. But she'll be back in service, providing enjoyment on the range here. Ready for another 50 or 100 years of shooting. And what the rust balloon process does is it coats the metal in this oxide now. And uh, so it it's, acts as a rust preventative going forward. Interesting that you use rust to prevent rust. but So now we can take our crane and slide it over our slide our cylinder on there oops slide our cylinder on there now we have to align this um, I don't know the detail is going to come through but there's a very specific there's two little protrusions and then a round a long round one so you have to put this in there and align it and it will it'll poke through once you get it aligned properly but don't try to force it because you will damage it so it just takes a little bit of Playing around here. We'll get it. There we go. So once that's on there, you can take your little star here and just thread it on there carefully. These are these are also old and delicate threads. So take your time, thread it carefully. Caught the thread. Now, if you remember in one of the earlier videos, I talked about this piece being fit to this cylinder, and you'll see there's a little cutout here and a little cutout here, and those correspond to two of the legs on here. So, as we put this together, this has to align properly or it won't seat flush. And you'll know what I'm talking about when you're looking at one. I don't think this camera is going to give you the definition I need, but it is custom fit and it will fit flush if you get it set right, like that. So it's flush all the way around. This moves freely, like so. Now we can slide that back in to the frame, like so. And that's latched in there. You can see our, our, our latch, I'm pushing on the back of it. It's latched, so that's working properly. Now we can take our two cylinder retain, uh, retaining screws, these this is the post that holds the cylinder in place, and this is the screw that holds the post. There, this has a little notch in it. This this post has a little notch in it here that corresponds to this lip on the screw on the, the screw. So they kind of fit together. And uh, and then as you tighten one, it pulls the, the post down in there. The newer models of these old revolvers have a different mechanism, more like a Smith & Wesson, but these older ones, this is the way they're set up. So now we just tighten this down. This is the wrong screw head, I know, but I'm not going to be tightening it down too tight. Okay. And just snug it up a little bit. So, there we go, double action, single action, and there's, I've got some new grips coming, they're, they're replacement grips, they're exactly like this, they're the originals, but they're not blown out on the bottom like this, so this gun, this is really essentially what this gun's going to look like, uh, the same but without chipped up grips. And the nice thing is they made millions of these things, so there's a lot of parts out there for these old revolvers. And uh, there are a lot of custom grips, too, if you want to put you know, fake staghorn grips on it or wood grips. Um, you know, they've made, there's a lot of people that make them. There's a lot of used ones available. Um, just many, many parts for these old guns. So I just tighten that down snug, and there we go. That's the finished product after our uh, preservation efforts. So I think it looks better. I think it's a much nicer gun. Uh, I think we've added value to this thing, which 
it's unusual to be able to refinish sort of half half re refinish half restore a gun and provide value as bad as and as rough as this was when we began i think we've done it a uh, a strong favor to get it back into service and ready to shoot again so anyway that's it that's the the 1921 colt police positive um kind of re-blued using a rust blowing process and um inspected and reassembled and back to the range we go thank you for watching and um i hope this was interesting and uh, i think my next project will be this which is a 19 well 1897 somewhere in that neighborhood 32 s and w black powder um pistol and it's called the iris and johnson safety automatic and this is my next project i'm not sure what i'm going to do with it i'm probably not going to refinish it it seems to be in relatively good shape so this will be another project for another day thank you for watching and uh we'll talk to you soon